Day 11, the long haul. 4.45 wake-up call, bags out by 5.30, lobby by 6. Boat to the bus, bus to the Aswan Airport, short flight to Cairo. Another bus, a stop somewhere for shawarma takeout, which we eat in transit, to the Museum of Egyptian Antiquities. There are over 120,000 items, and it needs at least a full day. We had three hours. A photo pass is required, but I was never asked for verification. We were given headsets to hear the guides, but Shannon's didn't work, and I wasn't paying attention, so we ditched the group to cover more ground. It was also very humid in the building, with very few fans, so moving around was better than sweating in place. Signage was inconsistent and sometimes non-existent, so I don't have context for some of these items. I'll present them in the order seen so you can experience the organized chaos. Black granite coffin, intricately carved, highly polished. Wooden coffin, would have been nice if I had taken a closer picture of the ornate face. Single piece granite statue, again very detailed carving and highly polished. Next we move into a room of large granite sarcophagi. Large blocks hollowed out, exterior faces carved, rounded lids with the ends left square, and lifting bosses. Then there's this behemoth, and what makes it interesting is the broken lid and saw cut. It's often cited as an example for lost ancient high technology. Supposedly the tool ran off course, bound up, and snapped the lid, because had it been a handsaw cutting slowly, the error could have been prevented. Maybe they had some form of automation using water wheels, or maybe they just had people that didn't pay attention like we do. What I find most interesting is that it was first hollowed out, and then the lid was sliced from what would become the bottom. Then we see more large boxes of varying design. This is said to be the snake head, which was originally attached to the head of the Great Sphinx. I'm not sure what this is, but it has 14 individually carved lion heads around the perimeter. Sarcophagus made from a block of alabaster. Wooden door frame, which is seemingly a rarity in ancient Egypt. And a wooden statue with creepy white eyes. I should probably know who this is. This is the famous funerary or Ka statue of Khafre, carved from a diorite type stone. It's 5 foot 6 inches tall and said to have been found in the valley temple. Some accounts say it was buried in the vertical shaft. You can see how the rectangular base would have slotted into the floor recesses of the temple floor. High relief carvings on the side of the base, but the cartouche is low relief, which is why some speculate it's not actually Khafre. He just had his name carved into it. Then behind his head is Horus, as a protector, a detail which isn't seen from the front view. It's a standout relic for sure. This doorframe caught my eye due to the odd recesses. I have no idea if this is original work, which helped anchor pigmented plaster, or if it's later destruction. It looks too clean to be vandalism. Another alabaster box. The camera didn't pick it up, but parallel tooling marks are visible and tactile. The type of precision you'd expect to see from a lathe or a CNC. Then each end has two holes, which is connected via a slot on the underside. I speculate this was a channel for rope, so you could lower and place the lid, and then reclaim the rope. More wooden statues. Notice the mortise for attaching an arm. And this guy is missing a vital area. This alabaster box had an atypically thin lid and small nubs. And you can see they just put stuff against every wall. Canopy frame and bed, which looks really uncomfortable. Another box. This one has painted hieroglyphs on the inside. Few Ka statues. These are granite canopic chests for storage of organs as part of the mummification process. The lid slotted into a carved rabbit, oddly smushed statues, and a group of diorite sphinxes. Wooden statue with the horns of Hathor, and of course I had to check out the dovetail joinery. An apis bowl carved from granite. This statue appears to be carved from marble, and a granite sphinx very similar in design to the Great Sphinx. I wanted a picture of the tail for future comparison. On the second floor, we found a large collection of items belonging to King Tut. Running down the center of the corridor were these large shrines made of wood and gold. Apparently, these were found in the burial chamber and were nested. Four shrines, the sarcophagus, three inner coffins, then the mummy. This chest was found in his treasury chamber. Then there was furniture, a golden mask, canopic jars and chest, Servants for the afterlife, a statue, and then this awesomely carved Anubis on a pedestal.
Additional rooms contain the more famous items, but photos were prohibited, so these are internet grabs. His iconic funerary mask, gold coffins, and daggers. One gold, and one said to be meteoric, since it predates the Iron Age by about 200 years. This is a view down into the atrium. It's an area we didn't get to see due to time, and that's a regret. It's full of large sarcophagi and benbens, or pyramidians. More wooden coffins. This one was very decorative, and I found the open sides to be quite unique. Canopic items, and then several shelves full of mummies. There is a separate mummy room, but it requires an additional ticket, and we were running short on time. I spent the last 15 minutes feverishly searching for tools and the artifact known as the schist disc or tri-lobed disc. No luck with the tools, but I did find some carved spoons and stone bowl fragments. This one even looked like a cake plate. This item was made of schist and interesting, but not the target. I ended up finding it with minutes to spare in a plain looking case sandwiched between two other cases. It looks like shaped metal or molded clay but it's said to be made of schist, which is a brittle, layered rock formed from shale. How these thin, compound curves were carved without the rock separating is beyond me. It's been reassembled with large portions recreated, I'm not sure of that percentage, nor how they determined the original shape. And getting a clear picture through the dirty yet reflective glass turned out to be quite challenging. It's labeled as a First Dynasty vessel for lotus flowers, which was found in a Saqqara tomb. Most theories start by saying it's a stone version of the metal original, but there's no evidence for that. Then they continue with propeller or impeller for moving water, part of an advanced machine like levitation, stone cutting, spacecraft, tool for twisting rope, and a steam generator. I urge you to look it up. It's a fun rabbit hole. I'd like to get a full-scale 3D printed version for actual experimentation. Like I hope you've got the appropriate pass for that now. Yeah, I do. You can reach in my pocket, grab it. <laughs> your front room with the zip. Take your time while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> that looks machine. That's a drawing, right? Yeah. After the museum, we headed to the Canal Kalili Market an area of densely populated retail shops which spill out onto the streets. Most of the wares appeared to be imported and there was a lot of duplication. I was specifically looking for handmade drums, but there were no custom instrument makers to be found. Dinner was at a higher end restaurant and then we spent several hours in gridlock. Everyone is on the road, buses, cars, tuk-tuks, motorcycles with an entire four person family piled on, bicycles, horse-drawn carriages, pedestrians, street corn vendors, and even camels. We finally arrived back at the Mina house at 9 p.m., grabbed our bags and a room key, and probably fell asleep before hitting the pillow. 